We create jobs and make entrepreneurial dreams come true. ACE, a nonprofit community lender, specializes in small business loans coupled with business advisory services. ACE has loaned more than $39 million, helped over 725 business owners fulfill their dreams, and ACE has helped its clients create or retain more than 6,200 jobs. These are the stories of those businesses we've helped reach success and claim their American dream. Welcome to Ace's Best Stories. I'm your host, Eric Holtzclaw. Each week, we bring you another story of a small business owner, entrepreneur, or inventor along the path of building their business. This week, we're talking with Marcella Cortez. She is the founder and designer of Lovaboo. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Eric. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, thank you for coming. So Lovaboo, that's kind of fun to, to say. So tell me, what is Lovaboo? Uh, well, it all started with uh, some peekaboo dolls that I designed okay. for my kids. Oh. Because I couldn't find like peekaboo dolls and they love to play peekaboo. So I thought, well, if I cannot find it on the market, I'm going to make them myself. <laughs> I needed it, that yesterday. We were, okay. doing, we were doing an interview at a house. I bet. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, uh, there was a lady who, her baby was there, uh, and the baby wanted to play peek peekaboo the whole time. Well, you there. see, yeah. I'm not the only one who had that problem. <laughs> so uh, it all started with uh, the peekaboo dolls. And, and after, you know, you know, after a while, people started asking me about the dolls and where did you get them? So I thought, hmm, maybe we have a, a business here. And when I decided to start selling them, I thought, well, I need to name uh, the brand and, and, and create a brand. And I, I thought, well, Peekaboo, it's very general. So I started to play, play, I started to play with, the, with the word, incorporate the word in the, or the expression in some way on the name. So I came up with Lova Boo, which kind of in, included the Peekaboo yeah. and also, well, like love and, and right. Abu. And so, so that's how... I came up with the name. Well, they def they should hand these out on airplanes. Okay. Because I always end up behind the kid that oh, wants to play okay, I for see. You know, four hours on the way to San Francisco. So, uh, so tell me about. So, so, were you? Did you have a background in creating? Well, would you call it a toy, or is it like a product line? Or yes, it. Toys? I have it's it's handmade toys and accessories, children's accessories. Okay. So, uh, I used to paint and make a lot of crafts when I was younger, <laughs> a couple of years ago, <laughs> a and, couple years ago. just a couple, just a couple. In, in, but then after the kids came, I kind of like focus on uh, paying bills and, and getting like a real job. <laughs> and so I, I started working as a, as a reporter oh. for an international news agency because that's what I really studied and everything I went to college for. So, but so I you always went to school for journalism. Yes. Yeah. That's why I started. I think that's the path I I might have if I get to go start over again, that would be what I would do. I really love the, it, It's a great career. Yeah. It's a great career. Yeah. And I enjoyed uh, working on that, but I still had that like kind of little like bug like telling me, you know, you have to create things and and then when the kids started like growing up a little bit, I started like, okay, I'm going to make things for them. So that's basically how all I start, it all started. Like all my all my toys and accessories have been inspired by my kids and tested by my <laughs> tested kids. Tested by your kids too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they're kid approved, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so from the peekaboo toy, then what are the other kinds of products well, and things that you created? New demands were like yeah. created, and uh, for example, one of my uh, most popular. Uh, um, products it's like an animal scarf i i make that when you took it in you create the little bunny or the little uh, bear here yeah. and it was because i i made it because my daughter now seven when she was five she hated the scarves but she loves bunnies so i thought maybe if i can make some kind of a you know bunny that she can like look at it and she will like keep her scarf on so that's how I came up with oh, the the, oh the idea, and and then bribing the kids to wear exactly their kind of <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of my my design process. I try to get a 
useful product or something that we need and make it playful, make it uh, make it appealing for the kids. Like it's a win-win situation. Mom is happy and and the kid is happy. It's right. kind of like that. That is my path. That that is why. It's, and so going from you know deciding that you're going to create something for your kids to something that would be a product line that you would sell to other people. Like mm-hmm. did, was that always in the back of your head, or did someone encourage no. you to do that, or how did you end up in never, that place? Never. It, as I told you, I started making just making it making everything just for my kids. But then when I saw the interest on some of the things I made, I was like, oh, maybe we can we can try and, and manufacture and, and 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 sell them. So I started going to a craft shows to see what was the the reaction and, and the response. And it was great. It was actually great. And I thought, well, maybe then we really do have a, <laughs> a, a business here. And but it's been kind of like everything has been falling into place like uh, little by little it's it hasn't unfortunately it hasn't been very planned <laughs> so it's been like almost yeah, like bit. responding to the demand and yeah but you say that and the thing that you've done that's smart that you see a lot of people who don't do mm-hmm. is it feel, feels like you've tested along the way I right? like you tested with your own <laughs> kids you've yeah. taken it into small markets and sometimes people think about things too big right there, create Mm -hmm. something and they're like, oh, I want this, I'm gonna create this for everybody, but they Mm -hmm. haven't even asked one person. Yeah, I think the craft shows uh, were a great like marketing uh, tool and and canvassing. I was like able to see what products worked, which ones didn't work that much. Uh, and, And of course, I've like improved a lot in like labeling, in my products and trying to to make people understand what I make and what I'm what I'm trying to to do with my products and because for example some of the 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 things I make some of the products I make if I'm not there to explain to people you know they play peekaboo or they do these people may buy the doll because they like it but they don't they didn't know they, they don't know the use uh-huh, yeah, exactly yeah. so. It, it's a good way of learning, you know, having that feedback, that direct feedback and learning how to improve your, your product. So I would recommend 100% to go to these kind of like a small craft uh, shows that you have the direct contact with the, the customer and see their response and, and, and hear their feedback. Yeah. So, so in the manufacturing process... Mm-hmm. getting the product created because mm-hmm. I, I assume you started you made them probably at home to begin with yes, yes. and then how did you find well i'm still making them, oh, making them home. Yes. okay okay so you're I, I just hire someone to help me okay. but yeah we're still not that big <laughs> okay all right all right well good well hopefully that, 2018 like will be okay that'll be that that is the year mm-hmm. this is the year for you you're gonna have your own plan Hopefully. <laughs> I don't know if I, I want to hope for that, but yes, hopefully we'll be able to grow. So, so from a product perspective, creating the product, but then you have the labeling. So did you have to go outside for labeling? To, yes. Okay. So talk to me about how you even knew, I wouldn't even know what to do. Like I, number one, I shouldn't be, I wouldn't be selling a product because it's just not, I, I, I lost a button this morning. I had to have okay. somebody sew the button oh. on for me. <laughs> Very good. You have to learn how to do I that. I cook and things. I just don't the sewing. Okay, but okay. anyway, so if you, you're creating the product, but then you decided you need the labeling, like how did yes. you go about the process of then knowing what to design or create from that perspective? It's been like, you know, it, it, it's a learning process. It, it's, there's no like one uh, magic recipe or one like perfect recipe for, it, for, for that. But uh, uh, I kind of like, I had the idea of what I wanted so I just had to look for the designer to make it. Uh, I'm currently working with a designer in Costa Rica because I, I, I was raised in Costa Rica. So, and we clicked. I, I loved her work and I loved her, you know, her style. And I thought we would a good match. So it's basically that, you, you know, you have to explore and see what, what really clicks with you and, and, and what connects with you and, 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 and go from there, especially if you're on the creative side of business. Yeah. And, and, and that's how I started like working with her. And I basically do all the drawings and, and she transform it in, into, into, yeah, yeah. into a label. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, and you say that, you know, designers for every business needs a designer. 
Mm. You've got a logo and a website exactly. and brochures and labels mm-hmm. and all kinds of things. And finding a designer that you click with, yeah. you know, that takes a long time. And if you find yeah. somebody keeping them, having a way that you can go back and forth, because that is a, it's a tough translation. Yes, to get and especially they, they, they have to be really patient <laughs> because there will be a lot of changes right. by the way. And right, right, right. So, and, and, and not take it personally when you say like, mm, no, I don't like these, mm. I need to change these. And so I think you need to, to find a person where, which, you know, with you feel like, well, you, you feel connect, like yeah. you can, yeah, you can connect. Connect and that understands long term exactly. what the product is trying to address because yeah. the design is the first thing people see mm-hmm. they see that before they read the words it's like the pictures you're using mm-hmm. all those kind of things are really important to that process yes, and so as you've considered some of the lessons along the way you talk about you know small market testing which is what you've done and then you talk about the um, people using the product have you really just used labeling and in, in person to describe that or are you using any social media or other ways like how do you tell people when they think because you have your products online, don't you? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, I've been, uh, I've been doing. A, uh, well, I, one thing that I, I I like to to do with my my products is I make gifts to sh- kind of show how it goes and 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 show how it works and because it's something that, for example, if somebody forgets, oh, how how did you put that scarf or how did you? They can just go on my website and find the gift that shows like on a playful way how to use the the product and 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 yes of course social media is a very powerful uh, tool that that I think any business owner should should uh, use to kind of like connect with the customers and 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 to trans transmit the the, the message they want yeah. to the so what have you found with social media? Was that something that you like knew how to use to begin with or? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I, I'm still learning. It's a learning process. And, and it, I, I feel like when you don't come from the business, um, from a business background and, and, and it's sometimes hard for you to, um, just use the, the use social media to sell. Yeah. For me, it's it's hard to go from like just trying to connect with the customers and and create like a relationship between you and the customers and and just sell because it it, it takes a lot of self from self promotion. Yeah. Shameless self promotion. Self promotion. Right. And I'm not that good at that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I hope I, if at least my sister you know gives me a like or something <laughs> <laughs> when I post this. Start, look at this beautiful. Start, start with the scarves. friends and family, right? Exactly. Start with the friends you and have family. have to like me- private message them. Please give. <laughs> please, I need some likes here on that post. So, but but it's like it. It, it is a very powerful tool. Yeah. So, so we entrepreneurs should uh, learn how to use it and and really take advantage of it. Yeah. So we're going to go to commercial break. When we get back, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what kind of things you've been learning along, along the way of, you know, funding it, you know, okay. other kind of lessons, how you tapped into some of the business side. So okay. like how you... Yes. Learned how to keep the books and stuff. Okay, uh, yes, that kind that's of thing, a learning so. process to pick books. It's a, yeah. a new thing. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be back in just a second. We're talking with Marcella Cortez. You're listening to Ace's Best Stories. I'm your host, Eric Holtzclaw. She's the founder and designer of Lovaboo. And we'll be back in just a minute. wasn't for Ace, my business may have closed in one year. If it wasn't for Ace, my business wouldn't be expanded as much as it's expanding right now. They were there for me at the time of my need. If it wasn't for Ace, uh, we would not be here today. Yeah. If it wasn't for Ace, I would very much still be cooking at an hourly rate, and I would have never impacted hundreds of lives in an entire community. I still remember going to different kind of banks, big banks, and uh, with papers and, you know, these people 
send me back because I don't have, you know, I had experience in the restaurant business, but I don't have, the, you know, every, everything else this bank needed. And I believe in me. I did the research in adult day. Um, I had experienced it personally because my grandfather had Alzheimer's. So I wanted to do the business myself, um, get into it because I knew I could make a difference. Initially when we started there was only one person which would be me and then the company I've grown do, uh, from one person to eight and we provide quality assurance, quality uh, control testing uh, for FDA regulated companies. I think Grace um, not only completely understands what it's like to start off in an office connected to your laundry room or wherever she was, but um, she also understands the growth process and I think that she does an excellent job of making sure that everybody um, who works with ACE has an understanding of the, the kind of struggles and celebrations that you can have. ACE has uh, helped us with putting our business idea into the market, working with us, with the business actually working, actually showing us, guiding us, guiding me personally, uh, how to solve some of my uh, marketing issue problems or with the business planning. You don't meet many lenders that are invested in your success and you know, from their classes or presentations, seminars, they really do have a vested interest in your success. The best advice I can do to small business owners is follow your dreams, you know? Always follow your dreams, follow, follow your heart. Have a plan. Just because you have a passion for it doesn't mean that you can start a good business. Get ready for the ride of your life. And definitely make sure that you look out for fantastic resources like ACE. ACE is a way to go. You're just the best. <laughs> they really are. And we're back. You're listening to Ace's Best Stories. I'm your host, Eric Holtzkoff. I had a wardrobe change <laughs> in between. So this is a bow tie that yes. you created, and it turns into a superhero cape. Yes. I it's love called, it. It's called the Incognito Superhero Bow Cape. So it's actually the... the ultimate accessory any any incognito superhero should have. Yes, it unties, and then you turn it to the back, no, and it's a superhero. Exactly. Yay, I've always wanted to be a superhero. <laughs> I like it. I told you you need this for adults. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make custom made see, one for you. <laughs> you could do it just so that like when you're walking into a big meeting. Exactly. Like, I'm see? now a superhero. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm talking with Marcella Cortez. She's the founder and designer of Lovaboo. And you've got the products there, these like scarves mm -hmm. that can be turned into, which is funny. The funny story for me is I always thought a scarf was like a, you know, fashion thing. Uh -huh. And then we went up to DC one time we were freezing to death and my wife showed me how you actually really use a scarf. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she's like, you do this. And I'm like, oh, that's oh, how you stay warm. That, okay. It's useful then. Yeah. It's yeah, not so, just like to look nice. Yeah, so they're like all fun but useful products. They're kind of, yeah. they're very cool. So Thanks. you have a big imagination. Uh, yes, and two kids. And two kids. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so um, as you think about, you know, growing the business and some of the things that you're doing, you're selling primarily retail now. You and I were talking yes. about the commercial break. You're thinking about going into wholesale? Yes, I'm actually, I just started this a year. I thought, you know, after five years, like doing craft shows and, and more like it's, small stores, boutiques here around Atlanta, I thought, well, it's maybe the time to go ahead and give the, the, the next uh, step on my, on my, take the net, the next step on my, on my project and my, on my endeavor. And I went to New York for a trade show. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not, not like when, when <laughs> you're going to make it big. Let's go big. <laughs> 
yes. <laughs> the, yeah, I, when I went, I, when I got there, I was like, okay, maybe this was too big for me, but now I'm here. Gives you a I'm goal, gonna, right? I'm there gonna you go. make it work, and and it was a great uh, trade show. I I I received a great feedback from stores, and I'm actually now carrying my line on the. Um, Metropolitan, the modern, uh, uh, the oh. contemporary uh, museum uh, in, in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, the contemporary uh, art museum in Chicago, also in in the folk art museum in New York, and around uh, uncommongoods.com, uh -huh. our website. Oh, wow. Yes. And also 18 more uh, uh, boutiques around uh, the U.S. That's very so nice. So it was, it was a good show. It was a good first experience. Um, so talk to me about the so uh, the gift stores inside museums. That's an interesting yes, fit. Yes. I, I thought it was, I, I was very proud, actually, when yeah. they approached me and they, they thought they could be a, that I, my products could be a, a, a good fit uh, for their stores. And, and, and yes, I think it's, it's, it, it, I, as I told you, I try to kind of like incorporate a design into like more elaborate design into my, my products. So I thought they like that. And, and well, they, I can see if they're like having like a superhero exhibit, you know, for like your bow tie or yes, you know, maybe, right maybe there. too. Yeah. And, and also I feel like, um, you know, I, I one of the things that, other than my kids, that inspire me to keep doing what I do, is kind of like recover or or get take back that kind of like all oh, feeling. Like I feel like we have lost the ability to amaze ourselves yeah. with like simple things. Right. With like because we're too focused on you know life is too fast and computers and more Something easier like at exactly you all the time. So. Uh, that was kind of like the, the the thinking, the feeling I had when I started creating the, the toys for my kids. And I love to see that also when when I show my products, even to adults, when they are like, oh, I was not expecting yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> like a, a superhero cape after, you know, to, the, that bow tie to turn into a superhero cape or this little scarf, like to turn into a cute little bunny or so. So I, I don't know. I think that that could be one of the things that make me different or differentiate me from, from other uh, uh, makers. And, and, and I think that that is maybe what they saw on my products that, yeah. that, that they, they, they lied thought, to, yes. Yeah. And, and then you have your little bit of self promotion, <laughs> shameless self promotion here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there, there's the stuff around, you know, the, getting it, wholesaling it and things like mm -hmm. that. There's also the components of just running the business. So yes. were you like a financial whiz when you started this or is that something mm. you've learned? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I've been learning through, you know, through the process and, and I had to start working with QuickBooks to send invoices and and all the, the, the paperwork. It makes it a lot easier. I'm still learning yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and also uh, i've been working with ace uh -huh. uh, to get access to have access to capital to be able to manufacture in larger quantities because until now it's been uh, me and me myself and i and, yeah. and one other lady who <laughs> right. helps me but now that i'm growing i feel the need to to manufacture in larger quantities and and for that i will need a capital. So I've been working with uh, with with Ace on different options I could have uh, access to. Yeah, and I would see that from a manufacturing perspective. You know, it's diff when you get into wholesale, you could end up with one customer ordering a ton of product. Yes. And just to even have it in the store, you have to be able to produce and create enough of that to to mm -hmm. get it out there. And I love the fact that you are using QuickBooks. I've there are a lot of small business owners that I talk with, and they're they don't have their stuff into a financial system. You have to. You've got to know what yeah. your profit and loss statement looks like and your balance sheet and keeping it up to date because that's how you know what you're doing and it helps make the end of the year tax season easier too. Yes. And it, it, and it helped, you know, even for a mom entrepreneur like me who <laughs> knows nothing <laughs> about business and financial like uh, uh, education it doesn't have any financial education it 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 helps you it guides you it's it's like it's it's a uh, 
QuickBooks is not paying me, but it's really easy. Yeah, it's like, this makes I'm not easier. getting any money from easier. QuickBooks, yeah. but it, well, and, trust me, it, it helps you. And it's very important if you're in the process of trying to raise money, you have to be able to show yes. what your business is doing, what yes. your P&Ls are, those kind of things. So if you don't have that information, you, you can't really get the money you're looking for. Yes, yeah. you're right. And so future for you. So for yourself, for the business, like, is this what you want to do full time? Is this still going to be a side, t- side hustle thing? Like, where are you headed with it? Are you going to be the next, like, kid product mogul hopefully (laughs) (laughs) hopefully but um in yes i i actually just resigned um, two weeks ago to my my job as a reporter i worked for the international spanish international news agency efe for 14 years okay and that was my real job your real job and then after the kids went to bed i would go to the basement and work on my sewing machine until 2 (laughs) a.m on the dolls, but I just decided that I wanted to focus on, on, on this project and, and, and see if, you know, if it's going to work, I have to, to be a hundred percent on, 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 on focus on the project. So I just resigned and my plan is of course to get capital. Uh, I'm thinking about, well, the options right now, it's like, of course, a loan, a small business loan, also crowdfunding. Yeah, that's a good idea. And yes, I just found about a, a new resource. Uh, they, you know, there, there are all the like more known uh, crowdfunding sites, but there's also a new one called I Fund Women, okay. which is focused only on women uh, businesses. businesses. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm thinking about uh, applying to this uh, to this website to get uh, some maybe a, a crowdfunding campaign in the future to be able to manufacture a, in a big set of it, exactly. yeah, from a wholesale perspective. Mm-hmm. And so more shows? Are you planning to like, you know, yes, probably. London, Paris? Okay, maybe even, <laughs> yes, why not? Maybe even Japan. Japan, yeah, yeah. why not? Yes, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing a, a, another a trade show maybe on the west coast, coast yeah. to get to know that that a, that market. And, yeah, and the trade shows are really important from the perspective of even just people you, connections you can make. Right, you can run into somebody that exactly. It's about setting up, but also you might run into a manufacturer. You might yes, find somebody who wants to yes. fund it. Like, it's not yes. just about that. It's yes. you know understanding some of the other parts of it. Yeah, very. And interesting. It, it gives you a, a great idea of where you are. What can you improve what, you know, how much you can grow? It, it is, it is overwhelming. It is, you know, you, you have to be prepared and if not <laughs> be brave, <laughs> but it, it is a, it, it is a, it's a great experience. I would recommend it to, to everybody who is trying to grow their business and, and, and see what is going on out there. Yeah, when you're getting to take creative, pro, you know, the th- things that are in your head and turn mm. them into a product, that's a really, it's a cool thing. It's a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. It, that's why I resigned to my job. <laughs> <laughs> my job. Well, you have more ideas, I decided, right? yeah. like, yes. If you're not up till two in the morning doing... No, the not anymore. I can't. <laughs> I, I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> so I know I, I have to stop doing that. <laughs> well, very nice. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Yeah, so we've been talking today with Marcella Cortez. She's the founder and designer of Lovaboo. And where can we find find your products right now? Well, uh, my website, uh, www.lovaboo.com, which is in the process of, I'm in the process of updating. Uh, And that's L-U-V-A-B-O-O.com. Thank you. And also I'm on Instagram, Lova as Lovaboo Kids, and on Facebook as Lovaboo Kids. So... You can check on my uh, uh, social media to see where I'm gonna be. Uh, yesterday we were at the at the Margaret Mitchell house for a great craft show, and I'll be this Sunday at Grand Park. Very nice, show. very nice. And look out for the adult bow tie <laughs> that turns into a super cape. I Custom for made. Every presentation that I go into. Okay. So <laughs> you've been listening to Ace's Best Stories. I'm your host, Eric Holtzclaw. Join us every Tuesday at 9 p.m. when we bring you another story of an entrepreneur, inventor, small business owner on their path to building their own American dream. <laughs>